So how do you say the name of the city that you live in? Bulawayo. Nhlala ko Bulawayo. Bulawayo. Ko Bulawayo. Bulawayo. Ko Bulawayo. Go Bulawayo. Nhlala ko Bulawayo. Want to do the So there's a great story about how that guys get to Bulawayo. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys get blown girls, girls because they just come here and they say teach me to say the name of your city and they'll say I know it is Buluwayo so teach me to say Bulawayo and then the girls uh, <laughs> <laughs> it goes forward all the time <laughs> but in any angle and this is Harare guy so how did I get to Bulawayo If you go to other European countries or even other African countries like Egypt, they have written records. We don't have that, except the, 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 the information that was written by the Europeans when they came to us. I don't even think we, we we knew there was something called writing. Except we painted those books. That was all we did. After decades of independence in Zimbabwe, we hear that we just painted those rocks. That's all we did. Really? So many people still believe that Africa has no records, no history, that civilization was brought by Europeans, and the European version of writing is the most reliable way of recording information. But is that really true? How can a magical place like Zimbabwe, where ancestors come and tell their own history to their children, look for its history in other places and in other stories? And who can help us hear the true story? We need to go deeper and deeper. The only people who can give us the true history of that place is the ancestors themselves who built it. Mm. We can easily communicate with those ancestors and we are given the clues, the explanations through sleeping and waking dreams and visions. Mm. That's all. Kunyora kunyepa, writing lies. You can write something down and it doesn't make it true. In fact, these days, it seems like if something is published in the media, it is more likely that it is a lie. Dagaenda kupula wayo, kutraga vanu vane uchenjeri. We wanted to understand how to understand the truth about Zimbabwe's and humanity's deep past. Zimbabwe. Yeah which we now call Great Zimbabwe. It's Zimbabwe. It's a Shona word. Mm. Z means big. Mm. Mba, a house. Bwe, Lombo. Mm. Zimbabwe, the big house of stone. Zimbabwe. Besides keeping shrines, the ancients focused on building monuments and temples that, through their astronomical alignment and mathematical precision, demonstrated a level of knowledge and awareness that would point us to a different and more advanced way of preserving information. Egyptian writing was sophisticated. Every hieroglyph had many meanings that worked together. These days, we use a form of writing where if you take a letter from a word by itself, it's meaningless. But in Egyptian hieroglyphs, you could take one symbol, and that in itself would mean 20 or 100 different things. But how are Zimbabwe and Egypt related? We talked to Pati Sanyati, founder of Amagugu Cultural Center in Bulawayo. Um, there are people who think uh, the Great Zimbabwe Monument you know, in Mashingo, yes. it is actually in line. 
uh, these uh, w- what they call ley lines, I hope you have read about yes, it, yes. which are lines of energy yeah. and Great Zimbabwe and the recently discovered David's calendar in South Africa uh-huh. and the pyramids are in line. The pyramids themselves are connecting with some monuments in Turkey and also in the Mediterranean area. Of course, the Mondoro, the Lions of Rain, the Lions of God, the Lions of Kings and Chiefs. The story is that once upon a time, a long time ago, a great light came from the stars and landed in Timbavati, where the white lions first showed up. The Mondoro who came from the stars and are still supporting the project of humanity with their light and illumination and their love. What I can speak to is what the White Lions have shared with me over the 30 years that I have served their protection in their heartland, which is a Star Lion territory. And then the eons of remembered time that I've walked with them and protected them and been, you know, of Star Lion consciousness. Yeah, and the lions are the incarnated expression of this force, mm-hmm. incarnate. So they are the sun in formed, the soul that has taken form in a being that is um, interdimensional, can be stellar and earthbound at the same time as the bridge for humanity back to the soul path, to the sun, beyond the sun, through to the galactic center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this meridian line that we see on Earth has a subterranean component, Mm -hmm. which is, call it the, the river of gold, but the indigenous peoples of Australia saw it as a river of stars beneath the earth, the song line. Mm -hmm. But then there is the celestial meridian, which is the Milky Way, and it's all coming into alignment. And there's that word alignment. Towards the the alignment. So there's this temple where Muslimic alignment, right? Uh They have this uh, square thing, uh, a door, right at the entrance of the temple. Uh So it is at sunrise, Paro Buddha. Rino Bruno Pina Nebashi square and okay. and it lights up the faces of the three things. So apparently like that area, yeah. They had um Ali the crocodile died, right? Okay, the, okay, okay. The name of the Sobek. God. Sobek. Sorry. Right? Yeah. Apparently it's like Sobek's temple. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So I actually, you know, experienced the alignment. I went there and I saw it and I was part of it. And it was a hella magical. Wow. So to me, the, the, like right at the very start, uh-huh. I discovered, it, wow, you know, like I, I can't even, I couldn't like imagine what people were thinking, right? Like, you know, the level of awareness, the level of consciousness that they had uh-huh. to be able to, you know, figure that out, like at this particular point in time. The sons of the stars. Is children of the stars in our language. In the bed. Yes, which is the same as Zulu. If you the, the Zulu will tell you is singabantu anabezin kanyezi ze Zulu. 
This will mean in heavens or up there, wherever that is. Mm. So we are the children of the stars. The, the, the problem comes when we lose the language. Mutauro wakakosha chairo. Language tells us about Hunu and Chivanu, which is a way of developing the awareness and alignment that allows for people. What are the principles of Chivanu? The principles Mirao, <laughs> Umuyamura, Munuya Ofara, with Zimia Kofara, with Manongo Apol. Yeah, those no father with Zimisus. Because the journey itself is both physical and spiritual. It is the return, uh, a return that is looking like myth- mythology. No, it's, it's for us things don't work like in a Western way, yeah. where you say uh, this particular hair, if you ingest it, or oh, you get a running stomach. In our case, no. You may use that med- uh, that medicine, which results in a running stomach, and I don't run at all. Yeah. Another person doesn't because there are things that are missing. It is. It's, yes, you need the plant, there's no doubt about that. But something else over and above that help. It is not just help, no. This is why even the spoken word on its own will work better than the help. On its own. Yeah, words don't lie, is it? Words don't lie, it's people who lie. At some point, it's almost like the stars wake you up, and when you start looking up, the question of the origins of humanity mm-hmm. a, come, and that question of who are we really as a people? When did we really begin? When did these questions begin? And and then the it's like the knowledge of the devastation of who we, we are meant to be, and this world that we live in that doesn't actually yet allow for the full expression of that. And traditional cultures all over the world being a piece of that. Mm-hmm. And the stars being what we have in common. Because we spend a lot of time as humanity dividing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And and we're told that that's the proper way of thinking about ourselves. Sure. You know? Whereas again, from the perspective of the stars, we look at ourselves and say, we're all people. Mm. We're all on this very small earth. Mm. <laughs> earth is small. Very the universe small. is big. Um, there's some. There's something about the human project that is so beautiful that all of these other spiritual mm. realms and the stars are. I think of them also as portals mm. because the connection between us and the communication between us isn't on the basis of distance, mm. which is how. Maybe science would have us think, but not physics, mm-hmm. huh? because physics is, is, is cutting all those things or, or changing how we think about distance and sure. time and so on. Sure. But the average person will say, oh, you know, Sirius is up there, and they'll say, yeah, that's very far. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's irrelevant to me because it's so far away. But if you think of it as a portal, even to another spiritual dimension, mm-hmm. you know, and you think about all of the effort that is coming in from all of these spiritual worlds, dimensions, other worlds, to say we want to support humanity, then you look at humanity and you say there's something really important in us just being ourselves. And it's not just important for the earth, yes it is, but it's important for the whole universe. Sure. And just for that authenticity, our authenticity, our heart to, sure. to come out. We are all people, 
We all feel the same great force of love that animates the universe. Zimbabwe holds an important key to the questions of humanity's past, our relationship to the stars, to time, and to our future as well. What we can express as human beings is truly divine. And that's, that's a part of our humanity that we need to claim back. In the old stories, the magical and true thing is hidden in plain sight, dressed in rags. It hangs out right in front of the human being, and it is the human being who must go through a magical journey in order to have their eyes and ears opened. The awareness, alignment, understanding, the deep and holy science and magic that used to inform humanity's experience on Earth. I love that people are creating beautiful things. One of the key things that really landed for me was that this is not theoretical. Right. This is the way life works on this planet. There is a governing authority that is the love that flows through the cosmos from the great source, whatever we wish to call that. Mm -hmm. And Earth is the furthest outpost from this um, great uh drama of a this great uh, orchestrated drama of absolute uh, meaningfulness that we have mm -hmm. lost it's there whether we know it or not and when we start working with it it is a sublime reconnection with source ultimately mm -hmm. oh, and the really lions beautiful. yeah and the lions are the incarnated expression of this force Felt like somehow, some way, we came from like something, and yes. then we brushed off into many different things. But we came from the same place, fabric. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. The, the language may be different, or but these things. I genuinely believe there is some chaos to the universe, but I think that chaos exists to constantly produce greater and greater harmony. Because I do believe that this harmony that's working in the universe. Um, we don't have a proper appreciation for how massive the universe is, is like you were saying. So that is such a small part. And if you don't appreciate uh, how small we are in relation to how big the universe is, you don't know how much you don't know, but you also don't know how much more truth exists out there. Uh, and you can live in a very small world, not knowing, not knowing how big stuff is. You know? The clues given to us in symbols, temples, myths, mathematics, songs, dances, and dreams from around the world tell us of a humanity deeply connected at its root. A humanity whose true history is not what we are told. The meridians and song lines from around the world, Egypt, Turkey, Peru, Mexico, Ukraine, and others lead us back to Zimbabwe. We have only started our journey with these questions. Our exploration of the past will become the Hakata divination spread of our future. Please come with us. People, when they come to Earth, they know that they are supposed to do something. Um, and 
but it's not a profession that that you know it's you just have a feeling like yeah and uh, and it's not the person who is supposed to fit the society it is the society that is supposed to be flexible enough to say okay what can we how can we help you how can we help you so that you can deliver the gifts that you have that you are because you are a gift you know uh yeah mono chipochikuru and this again so um yeah so